Hello and welcome. Um, I am Laura Brody. I am the primary curator and founder of Opulent Mobility. For description purposes, I am a middle-aged Caucasian woman with brown hair in front of a very full bookshelf with art and a cast of my foot over at the side. Welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. How do how did you find out about Opulent Mobility? Um, actually, my teaching assistant a few years ago um, had her work in it. Oh, you may you may be familiar with the piece that it's a bunch of medical bottles, like the orange medical bottles, like rope together. Yeah, some of some of those are my medicine bottles. Um, so Ke I didn't know Kelly was your teaching assistant. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Teacher. Kelly Gillespie did this great piece with all of these community organized pill bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so those was, are yours. <laughs> well, some of them are mine. Well, yeah, not all. A teaching assistant a few years ago, and I saw that she had been part of the show. So uh, that's that's initially how I found out about it. And then this year, I was like, hey, like I should apply. My art relates to this, so that was exciting. That's very cool because you've been doing you've been showing your work all over. Yeah, you so know, I tr I try to hop on the opportunities that I can, and I've been very fortunate to be a part of quite a few things. That's really great. Where are you teaching? Uh, I don't teach. I am a student currently. Okay. I'm a senior at Maryland Institute College of Art. I gotcha. am an interdisciplinary sculpture major BFA program, as well as the um, gender studies minor. And I have an illustration minor as well. The, oh, past, three, the past three summers, I did actually um, perform as a teaching assistant for the four college credit program for um, high schoolers. It's like a pre-college program. So I do have a little experience teaching. It's something that I do enjoy. Um, I currently work at Make Studio Baltimore, which is a program for artists with developmental disabilities. So some of mm. that does involve kind of workshops and teaching too. So I think, I think sharing art skills is a very important um, thing to do, but I'm not a full-blown teacher yet. <laughs> You know, we'll see. I definitely do think that to some extent, you know, holding workshops and sharing skills with others will always be an important part of my practice, regardless of if I go into that as a as a big career thing. Gotcha. What is your favorite medium? Uh, sculpture. I really love sculpture. I think that I think of sculpture kind of as a medium in and of itself. But of course, you know, there's a, a bunch of different materials you can use. And I would say that metal is probably my favorite, specifically steel. I do a lot of steel metal working. Um, I also really enjoy casting and mm. mold making and various media, but I definitely, I definitely think steel is my favorite, but I really appreciate combining it with other material. Like for example, right now I'm doing a lot of weavings on the TC2 loom. Um, oh, neat. And I am incorporating those weavings into this big steel sculpture I'm making right now. So I think very steel, cool. I think steel has a wonderful capability of connecting itself with other art forms. Absolutely. What got you into that, into metalwork in the first place? Um, so it's something I've always been interested in, something I always wanted to try. A couple of years ago, my intro to sculpture class at university required metal. That was like one of the units. Um, and so after starting that, I was like, wow, you know, this is <laughs> this is something I'm really passionate about. So I ended up taking, you know, more advanced metal working and just incorporating it into most of the work I do, even if it's not for metal working specifically. Like, for example, I'm in a biofabrication class right now. So I've been incorporating metal into that, even though that's not part of the curriculum. And what made you think about incorporating weaving into that? That's such a neat combination. I just, I, specifically the TC2 loom, it's a digitally assisted loom. So you basically create patterning and then incorporate the patterning into whatever art you want to display on the weaving and the machine assists in lifting the correct warp threads so that you can get really precise images. Our TC2 loom has, I think, 2,640 warp strings. So it's like a very detailed thing, but you're still 
standing there throwing the shuttle and picking which weft colors you want to use and using the beater and stuff like that. And I thought that it would be a really beautiful way to incorporate more photorealistic imagery and more illustration in imagery into like my metal work. That's wonderful. Had you always known you'd wanted to get into sculpture? In eighth grade, I had a sculpture mentorship for a while, but moving out of that, I kind of got into the 2D illustration track um, for a few years. And then my sophomore year of college, I took a sculpture class and I was like, it was, you know, it was like returning home after you'd been away for a long time. I was like, oh, right. You know, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. As much as I love drawing and I love other art making, sculpture is definitely what calls to me in the most concrete sense. I would love to share the pieces that we're going to be showing. Is it paroxysms? Yeah, of access. This is nice. a piece that I made in wood. I hand cut it on the scroll saw, if you're familiar with that tool. At yes. All. Absolutely. And clearly did some nice sanding work. No, I was just asking um, whether plywood is something that you use pretty regularly as well. I think it's a really helpful material. It's something that I definitely do incorporate. I really appreciate the ability to do things digitally, like digital fabrication, um, although that wasn't used in this piece specifically. And plywood works really well for digital fabrication. Um, hmm. For this, for this specific piece, knowing what I wanted going into it, plywood was a good choice. Um, yeah, and I do think wood is a beautiful material. It really is. Uh, was there something in mind that you had in mind when you were putting it together? Um, this piece was kind of talking about the lack of accessibility and ADA compliance at my school. Um, this was kind of like a site specific piece that I briefly had up in front of this area uh, in the sculpture building that's only accessible via stairs, which is obviously not great. <laughs> um, a lot of my work involves disability justice as well as the actual act of creating sculptures. So a lot of my work does kind of tie back into talking about access and talking about accessibility issues and just disability rights in general. So for this piece, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that issue and just bring attention to it. I think that art is a really powerful medium as far as like communicating those types of issues and getting people involved in that conversation. No, it's a great way to start the conversations for people who might not otherwise think about it. How did yeah. you do that as a site specific thing? How did you help bring up that conversation? Um, I had this up in front of where the staircase is for a while. I think, you know, the color, obviously, it's immediately drawing attention to it. And I had like little pamphlets explaining like what the problem was and like things you could mm. do as far as contacting administration or just generally in your community trying to work towards better access for disabled people. Perfect. No, and it's a great way to do it because it's not screaming at somebody, but it is absolutely commanding attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's moments to be more powerful and more aggressive in like advocacy. But I think that when you're just trying to get random people involved who don't really know something is even wrong yet, I think that art in particular and just trying to go at it from, you know, an open perspective uh, is definitely really helpful. What is the story behind this? Um, This is a piece kind of talking about one of my medical conditions, lipomyelin meningocele, which I've had three pretty major neurosurgeries for and just kind of talking about living with, you know, a spinal cord injury and that experience. Um, this piece I created in Rhino 3D, which is a digital software program. And then I cut these pieces individually on the laser cutter and acrylic welded them together. And there's a light inside of it too. I can feel that. And I can feel that you've got a sort of neural net feel to the other both of the pieces mm -hmm. a lot of my work incorporates this sort of like body imagery you know talking about the body but also i like to reference net like shapes in my work a lot i think that nets are a really interesting way to talk about a lot of the concepts i'm trying to approach you know on one hand nets can really be a source of ensnaring like you know you can think of like a fishing net or something but they can also be very protective like you can think of trapeze artists for example you know there's a net underneath them in case they fall and I think that that kind of is a good illusion for 
the disability community because I think on one hand, you know, we've created these spaces that are so full of care and so protective and so wonderful. But on the other hand, there's something you have to consider, which is that a lot of the disability com community comes together because they have to, like it's out of necessity that it happens and that we build these connections. So in a way it's almost like an ensnaring, even though in the end it's a very, very positive connection and community. So I think that that's kind of an an interesting way to talk about it and I think that nets kind of appear in nature a lot they kind of appear in our body a lot in a very you know abstract sense like if you think of blood vessels and you think of neurons and how things are connected within our body so I like to kind of create these net like shapes that allude back and reference the body that makes a lot of sense and yeah what a great way to talk about community and conversation as well you know mm -hmm for however you get there. Cause yes, yeah, sometimes yeah. it yeah. is out of necessity, which is not our best way, but sometimes that is how anything gets done. Was that something that you've run into a lot of problems in terms of access with art schooling? I, I not to throw my school under the bus, well, but yeah. I, I, well, I, no, I, no, I mean, so many places have this well, problem. Yeah, it is for sure a problem. You know, I will say that my professors and my peers, you know, they're all wonderful and committed to trying to make the space as accessible as possible. But um, the administration and the infrastructure of the buildings themselves are very inaccessible. You know, my, my main building I attend school in is not ADA compliant um, and I use a wheelchair sometimes because I have a spinal cord injury so I've actually had some injuries that I have to like go to the doctor for because of the lack of accessibility and how dangerous that is to me as a wheelchair user and then I've also you know in in broader art spaces run into accessibility issues like for example yeah. you know this summer when I was teaching pre-college students um the National Museum of Art actually pretty forcibly forced me out of the museum. They had security escort me out because I had to keep my backpack with me because my backpack has life-saving medications in it that I can't be separated from. And they were like, you have to check your bag or you can't be in the museum. So, and then they called security on me when I was like asking for other options. So it wasn't great. Um, there's a lot of access issues like that in the world at large, which is one of the reasons why so much of my art and so much of my practice in disability justice work um, kind of relates to access in the art. Like, for example, you know, um, I'm actually working on my second exhibition at MICA that I'm like, you know, the head curator for. I'm working with another artist at MICA as well. Um, and our exhibition is centering on kind of uplifting the disability community at MICA. So students, staff um, that identify as disabled and showing that art and trying to create um, this path of accessibility, uh, you know, cause a lot of times gallery spaces and art schools can be so inaccessible. Um, and I'm also recently, I'm, I'm a Franz Merrick fellow at MICA and I am at the Make Studio Baltimore site which as I mentioned is a progressive art studi studio for artists with developmental disabilities primarily. And I'm working with them to, uh, in a few months, create an exhibition that celebrates their artists there, but also celebrates the larger disabled artists Baltimore community. So it'll be open to anyone here who's disabled to apply. And that was really important to me um, when you apply to be a Franz Merrick fellow, you have to apply with a project idea. And that was my project idea because as great as it is to uplift Micah's disabled community, you know, it is a reality that art school is so accessible and I really, inaccessible. And I really think that there should be opportunities for disabled artists beyond, you know, art institutions because they're already so systemically prohibitive to disabled artists. Yeah, it's a real issue and it's an issue all over. So I'm really glad you're doing that. Yeah. Um, congratulations. So that's one of your yeah. major projects. You said you have another major project coming up as well. Um, yeah, I have my first solo show in April at Micah. Nice. April. I'm very excited to have been picked this year. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, so a lot of my work that I'm working on right now is going towards that and will be um, on display. And you were doing something with the Kennedy Center? 
Yeah, this year I am one of the 15 BSA Emerging Artists through the Kennedy Center. Um, it's a program primarily for disabled people or people within that kind of broader category. And it is a nationwide search, so anyone can apply that I think is under the age of like 25 or 26, I'm not sure. And there's a couple different age categories. I think there's like, uh, I'm not sure. There's a couple age categories, but all together it's 15 people. And it's a really wonderful opportunity. You get your art on display at the Kennedy Center for a while, and then it goes, um, I think, to Volkswagen of America, who's the presenting sponsor. But it also travels uh, the country for a year and goes to various different um, exhibition spaces. And they also give you a $5,000 grant. So I'm very excited to put that towards my art making practice um you know they fly you out and put you up in a hotel for like professional development opportunities for I think half a week too um so very very thankful for the opportunity it comes with a lot of a lot of big part perks and I'm really excited to be meeting um other disabled artists because I feel like the art world is so prohibitive to disabled people that you know a lot of the times it's hard to connect with other people with similar experiences so very excited very excited to have an artist opportunity where it is you know primarily disabled people or chronically ill people or you know people in that category you know very exciting to talk about my art with people who can understand the concept no that's really awesome i'm so glad about that that's for you yeah, you I'm did you have excited. something else as well because it sounds like that, that's plenty. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I have a, I have a lot of little shows here and there through Micah that are coming up. In May, it is Art Walk, which is our senior show where all the seniors have this big exhibition. They basically turn the entire school into an exhibition space. They put up all these big white walls and all the spaces that aren't normally exhibition spaces. So it is very cool to walk through. It's been wonderful to walk through in the past. I'm very excited to be a part of it. That is excellent. Do you have a current piece that you're excited about sharing or? Um, the piece that I'm most excited that I'm working on right now is mm -hmm. I'm basically embedding a bunch of TC2 weavings that I'm making into a steel bed that I am welding mm -hmm. and metal fabricating together. And it's going to, it's like a hosp steel hospital bed. It's going to be life size. So it's definitely a big, a big endeavor, but I'm enjoying working on it. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be neat. I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, be working on it. It's a big, it's a big project. Yeah, it sounds like it. Are you trying to build environments or are you just trying to do more individual pieces? Um, So I'm basically building this life-size steel hospital bed and then the hospital bed, all the railings will have these weavings I made on the TCT loom embedded in them. And then the like kind of sheet for it is also going to be a big weaving um i haven't really thought to the point of building anything else it's a very large project um that i just started recently working on you know i might make i might make things to go along with it or environments for it in the future but right now i'm happy with <laughs> the the amount of work this thing on its own is gonna take but yeah. after i build it i might progress and add more things to it has that ever happened when you there other pieces or that you started later on going back to them and, and building up on them? I think a lot of my pieces are in discussion with each other. So I'll make one piece and then it'll feel really important. So I'll work on another piece that is similar. Like for a while, you saw um, the one piece, but for a while I was making a lot of these kind of red net like shapes out of wood. Um, so I think a lot of times one piece will inspire more pieces. So it will kind of become its own little mini body of work within a larger body of work. So, um, we'll see what the bed inspires. So how can people find you online and your work and wherever? Uh, they can find me online at little pile of teeth on Instagram or 2000 teeth on Twitter um if they're interested in my work obviously they can come to this show uh they can also come to the kennedy's vsa emerging artist show i'm sure that they will be posting dates about that and also be posting dates in relation to the various different exhibitions around the country that the art will be on display at um, i'm sure i will be posting them once i get specific dates 
And uh, they, if they're in the Baltimore area, they can also come to my solo show in April that will be on Micah's campus. And I always post about other shows that I'm in. So I guess that's, I guess that's the best way to keep in touch 